This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so because many of you wanted to have a class on vulval disorder, therefore we are here. So let's start. So uh, vulval disorder, it's like uh, this is uh, lichen sclerosis. So actually, uh, when we do questions, it appears confusing. So if we had a clear idea about our condition, then the things become easy. Uh, whenever we are doing questions, we have to look for buzzwords. And if those buzzwords we are able to find, then the life will become easy. So I'll try to uh, simplify the things for you. So lichen sclerosis, first of all, so lichen sclerosis is inflammatory condition. Second, it is auto immune condition okay it uh, affects external genitalia it can happen both in males and females so this part you have to remember or you have to keep in your mind that not only in the females it can happen in the males also okay because sometimes in some sba stems they they give this okay it happens in male and female both okay so uh, uh, and it is lymphocyte mediated uh, response and there are auto antibodies and auto antibodies are produced for extracellular matrix protein one so uh, sometime in some sba you will find this also so it is important to remember that it being an autoimmune condition it affects uh, external genitalia in both sexes apart from this it is lymph lymphocyted mediated responses there because of auto antibodied bodies are uh, produced for extracellular uh, matrix protein one, because of this uh, auto antibodies, there is thinning of the skin. So whenever you find question of lichen sclerosis, always you will find thinning of the skin, fusion of the skin. So this is because of this auto antibody, it is uh, causing uh, like uh, this uh, changes there. And because of that changes, that thinning happens, okay. Apart from this, it is also important to remember that it occurs in females but it is whenever we see question you know so it will all in your questions it will be postmenopausal women but it happens usually in both it can happen in pre adolescent patient also that is young girl and it can happen in postmenopausal also in most of the question you will find she will be a postmenopausal woman but in many books, you will find many question answer will be lichen sclerosis and that will be a young girl or uh, like pre adolescent. So this part, it, it is important to remember. OK, so apart from so this is uh, like some briefing about lichen sclerosis. Apart from this, uh, it is important to know the histology of lichen sclerosis. Why it is important and it, because you will find many questions they will give some histological changes and according to that you have to identify what is the disease okay so what ha really happened here because uh, here happens uh, epidermal atrophy because of it epidermal atrophy there is a thinning apart from this hyperkeratosis is there that is too much of keratin formation important buzzword that we we really need to remember is the hyalinization of col uh, of collagen because of this destruction there is a hyalinization occurs so you will find in uh, and there is a lichenoid infiltrate all these four lines i have taken uh, from bash vulval disorder guideline so the uh, two th um, uh, two words you have to um, remember here one is atrophy another word what you have to remember is hyalinization so because if you can remember two things, two words only in histology, so you'll be able to answer that question. Okay, now it, it do have certain symptoms. Symptom will be itching. So uh, in your question, usually the patient will have an excessive itch and usually at night the itch is more. So because of itching, there will be soreness and because it causes uh, atrophy of the skin, so there will be fusion of uh, labia majora, labia minora that causes narrowing of the introitus because of that narrow introitus. You will find that a patient will complain of dyspareunia and that will be symptom of this disease. But uh, 
because of this uh, intercourse uh, sometimes there occurs fissuring or because it skin breaks down okay so dyspareunia is a symptom of it it is because of introital uh, fusion or uh, like it it is it gets narrow apart from this urinary symptoms will because of the sore skin whenever they are passing she is passing urine so uh, urine causes irritation so there will be urinary symptoms apart from this this line you have to remember and really important what is this perianal involvement in lichen sclerosis apart from extra like uh, um, that external genitalia involvement there is a perianal uh, uh, involvement also because of this some problem uh, occurs and the patient usually complains of constipation so this perianal involvement uh, occurs in lichen sclerosis only okay therefore sometime you have to find out this buzzword that is constipation so th th it happens in lichen sclerosis and sometime it may be asymptomatic and though it is uncommon so this part why it is important to uh, remember because in some stem uh, of spa you will find it can it be a asymptomatic so therefore uh, you should know this that patient has got this disease but there are no symptoms okay so these are with these symptoms usually patient presents now so you all of you can see this picture so you can see there had been uh, uh, like so much of atrophy is there and even uh, everything appears to be totally uh, fused and here you can see some fissuring is also there so uh, like this uh, this is the appearance where like this is this totally distorted anatomy it uh, the vulva has been fused and there had been breaking of the skin or ecchymosis and because of and in this situation you, you see in this situation if intercourse will happen so there will be dyspareunia okay so this type of picture usually occurs in uh, cases of uh, lichen sclerosis i will show a lot of picture also the things will be clear so what could be the signs if you examine the, uh, a patient of a lichen sclerosis so there will be pale atrophic area because we have just read in histology there will be atrophy of epidermis so we will find thin thinned out appearance or we will find pale atrophic area because of this there could be like uh, uh, erosions or fissuring because of the skin breaks are there because of that fissuring and erosion occurs there will be figure of eight lesion in next slide i'll be showing what is figure of eight lesion and this will be your buzzword okay so you have to remember this figure of it the moment you see in your question figure of eight your diagnosis is clear okay so uh, this i have said already so there will be loss of architecture loss of meno labia minora and there will be fusion so you can see here the uh, fusion so well so everything is fused here sometime clitoral hood even uh, buried or or, or it is totally sealed so you cannot see that uh, there is no clitoris here okay everything has been absorbed or it has been already atrophied okay and the one thing you have to remember what uh, basically confusion occurs when you answer what if it is a lichen sclerosis or it is a lichen planus so in lichen uh, sclerosis there will be no involvement of any mucous membrane so vagina and cervix is never affected uh, in lichen sclerosis so this is a differentiating point so in your exam in your question you will find vaginal involvement if you are finding then uh, surely you are dealing with lichen planus so this is a differentiating feature in between pl lichen planus and also in between lichen sclerosis okay now uh, if you can see these pictures so this is advanced lichen sclerosis now you can see to labia minora is totally absorbed and the, uh, even the clitoris is absorbed and everything has been fused okay and these because of thinning of skin there are you can see these are uh, like areas of ecchymosis are also present so usually this occur this appearance happens in a vulval lichen sclerosis 
for part two people you have to just understand you know by the visual picturization you have to just keep the pictures in your head so that you can answer but for part three people if anyone is sitting here you should uh, like the uh, uh, lichen sclerosis is very 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 important station even whole vulva is uh, very important for part three no exam has been there without you know a station from vulva okay in part three uh, for part three people they usually give you picture okay role player you will take history from role player then usually they will give you a picture and um, you have to identify uh, what is the diagnosis you have to explain that to role player and then you have to uh, tell them management so it is really important for part three people also that they should understand the situation um, the condition and also they have to diagnose and it will be from the pictures only so please be very careful um, that this part should be very clear then only part three station can be done okay so this is this is a classical picture apart from this if i was telling about figure of eight now you can see that uh, here there had been uh, extra genital involvement and it is encroaching up to uh, anus okay so is, uh, this is um, one uh, circle of eight and this is second circle of eight this uh, appearance we call as a figure of eight um, involvement and this is figure of it is it is, it is characteristic of lichen sclerosis okay so um, now if you remember only this picture in your head so your life will be easy and because now you can see because of so much of uh, uh, fusion intercourse is difficult they complain of dyspareunia uh, because a urinary problem will be there because when the urine they, they urinate so there will be soreness in the skin because of the anal involvement they do have a constipation so be, because of all these symptoms uh, uh, so much of involvement all these symptoms occur therefore cons figure of eight and constipation because of anal involvement is um, characteristic of lichen sclerosis okay now uh, uh, this you also get in sba stems that uh, um, extra genital lichen sclerosis yes extra like uh, extra genital um, lichen sclerosis lesions are also present and it, it affect in 10 percent of the cases this number is important for part two people because I have seen, I think one SBA, they ask about this number. So please remember this number, not a difficult number as well. So where the involvement can be there, they involve inner thigh. Inner thigh we have just seen in this picture. Her thigh was also involved, okay. So they can involve inner thigh, buttocks, lower back, abdomen, under the breast, neck, shoulders and armpit. So this is extra genital lichen sclerosis picture and this is under the breast. Why I have put a picture here because if you see a picture then you know it stays in your memory. So it do have an extra genital involvement. Now investigation usually when a patient of lichen sclerosis come you know we are not investigating why it because clinical appearance from symptoms and signs it is so clear so diagnosis we can make but if the if we are not able to make diagnosis then we have to investigate um, investigation like first we'll do biopsy uh, then it is autoimmune condition so investigation for other autoimmune conditions we have to do so it could be for thyroid it could be for diabetes sometimes thyroid sometimes uh, 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 this diabetes sometimes pernicious anemia vitiligo all these are the symptoms some they are associated with it and uh, like if you do a viva station then all these autoimmune disease you have to just uh, rule out somewhere and uh, so it is and also that helps you to remember that it is associated with other autoimmune conditions also if any uh, suspecting sign of infection is there then only swabs has, has to be set sent otherwise not and if you uh, you are not able to rule out allergy condition then patch testing so these are a few investigation um, out of this important one is biopsy and biopsy is done when you have made a diagnosis you have given a treatment for three months usually we give treatment and the patient is not uh, uh, improving 
or you, you do biopsy if the diagnosis is uncertain so you will find a question like patient has been taken treat has given treatment for three months but still she's having symptom and she uh, was very compliant patient what will be the next step your answer will be biopsy sometime you will find this stem also uh, like uh, associate what are the autoimmune disease associated so it it will be usually thyroid diabetes mellitus pernicious anemia and somewhere i have seen uh, vitiligo also you so these two things are important to remember now what you will treat it is like by heart you have to remember so first line of treatment is ultra potent uh, topical steroid so uh, yeah, there is a tog also in tog they write uh, supra potent so this supra potent and ultra potent is uh, same thing so uh, don't like uh, mess up with that and there are only two conditions uh, where supra potent or ultra potent steroid is used rest all other skin condition whatever we read in a uh, vulval disease we are using moderate uh, potent um, steroids okay so there are two condition where ultra potent or supra potent is used one is lichen sclerosis and another is lichen planus so what we are using clobitus or propionate so what is important here few things you have to remember so one it is is its strength this it will be asked in part two and also in part three in uk when i went for the course the uh, examiner asked me this uh, this percentage okay we have to write prescription also for part three so you know then uh, um, this number has to be written so it it is important to remember apart from this this because it is an ultra potent so uh, strength uh, of the tube is 30 milligram only if you uh, 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 if you see so I have marked both the numbers on the tube and have put a picture so for the better visualization of memory. So you have to remember this number and also you have to remember that one tube carries 30 milligram, 30 grams of ultra potent steroid. And another thing we have, it has to be used that one tube should last for three months. So whether, uh, and there is a, um, how to apply this tube. Usually it be, this is because ultra potent steroid so only one finger tip has to be used uh, at one time so that will be only enough and uh, uh, whenever the um, patient comes to you usually they have got dummies or you will show with your fingertip like this much amount you have to use okay and if they are using that fingertip amount then uh, one tube will last for three months and uh, the, uh, so they have got uh, this this way the patient has to be told so for first month they will be using it daily for second month they will be using its alternate day then they will be using two times in a week for uh, three months third month so one so uh, if they are using the, uh, this frequency and if they are using fingertip that is the right uh, use then one tube will last for three months okay and patient should get relief so this part is this you um, is important to remember for both part two and part three people very important apart from this so this is a recommended treatment and if any associated fungal um, infection is there bacterial or fungal infection then second uh, alternative will be dermovate and dermovate contains clobetasol, neomycin, and nystatin. Okay. Sometime, the, some in some uh, previous SBS, I I saw this dermovate as a name. Therefore, I I put it here. So if it is, if you already know, so answering questions become easy. Okay. Now there are these are recommended treatment. So apart from this, there are certain research treatments. So these are research treatment. No need to remember a lot about it. If you can remember, uh, just keep in your head its name. Name will be enough. So it is topical calcineurin inhibitor, oral retinoid, UVA phototherapy. Here I would like to just tell you something. Uh, if a patient is using ultra potent steroid on the skin, because of prolonged use of uh, steroid, sometimes skin thinning, skin irritation, and uh, uh, also, at uh, uh, like uh, per, uh, telling telling ectasia occurs. So this is a side effect of this potent steroid, ultra potent steroid. But if they are using this second line, 
treatment or research treatment that is topical calcineurin so in in uh, you with the use of this all these uh, side effects are not coming and this had been uh, written in vulval disease talk 2017 okay now some complication can happen because it being in a long term problem and the patient is suffering so much so what you have to remember that uh, from your uh, that scam there is a risk of squamous cell carcinoma mm -hmm. and it is 5% this number is really important because every time it is there it is this number is asked in the exam mm -hmm. and also part 3 people have to tell this number to role player so you please remember this number apart from this uh, like development of clitoral pseudo cyst may happen or uh, sexual dysfunction we have already discussed because of so much of problem uh, uh, with the anatomy uh, and uh, atrophy sexual dysfunction occurs and also uh, dysesthesia occurs so these are the few complication occurs but important that you should not miss any one of you is a risk of sc developing squamous cell carcinoma is 5% therefore uh whenever we do part 3 station we always ask say to role player if you find that there had been any change in the skin um, in your uh, vulval area any raised lesion is there in that situation you had to come back to hospital immediately we we gave them that type of warning sign we we tell them that they have to self examine and when they have to come back why we are saying that for part 3 because uh, the, there is a risk of development of squamous cell carcinoma okay so uh, um, after that follow up is also important we are giving this tube and this tube has to be used in 3 month so we would call them for follow up first we will call them in, after 3 month okay. then there will be two situation will happen your patient is uh, improving so if your patient is improving then we are very happy she should be followed annually like every year she should be followed and this follow up can be done at gp um, at their registered gp okay but there are second type uh, an, uh, another set of patient where the disease is active and it um, they have not responded adequately to treatment so if they have not responded and if the disease is active in that particular situation we have to refer patient a specialized uh, vulval clinic now towards the end of this class i will also explain what are the uh, um, what is the hierarchy of the um, uh, what is the hierarchy how the patients are seen some patient will be seen in the gp at the gp surgery some patient will be seen in gynae general gynae clinic some patient will be seen in uh, specialized vulval clinic and some patient will be seen in vulval cancer in cancer centers so um, that i'll be explaining you which patient will be seen at which level okay so there are levels where the patient will go so that i'll be explaining um, once i am finished with it okay so uh, so this is a sum summary of lichen sclerosis so uh, there is loss of anatomy okay there is figure of eight lesions these are figure of eight lesions vagina is not involved or mucous membrane is not involved usually you will find patient is post menopausal so if you find all these things in any question you are surely dealing with lichen sclerosis and treatment part this number you have to remember 30 mg gram tube for 3 months 3 monthly follow up yearly follow up with gp if you are not able to remember everything and if you can remember only these few things your sba will be answered okay so that this is all about lichen sclerosis now i'm moving to lichen planus but before that if any one of um, you have got any question about lichen sclerosis so please ask any question about lichen sclerosis anything that is not clear uh, biopsy what biopsy do we take incisional biopsy okay so that will be uh, decided by them okay usually they take a biopsy from the margin of uh, from the margin so they will be taking a healthy skin a, a part of healthy skin a part of diseased skin so it uh, will be incisional biopsy okay so uh, that uh, three types of biopsy these are more important in cases of vulval cancer 
here it will be general and biopsy that will be in seasonal is it clear yes thank you okay now lichen planus so lichen planus is also not very difficult to understand so um, lichen planus also so you can see these type of leaf usually uh, in lichen planus uh, this pinkish purplish violish uh, uh, colored lesion you will find and there will be like it will be shiny white appearance so some uh, i will show you picture again also so all these are the buzz words for lichen planus finding that your patient is suffering from lichen planus now coming to lichen planus lichen planus is uh, again a inflammatory disorder but in lichen planus as uh, there is the involvement of mucous membrane so this is one differentiating feature from lichen sclerosis that you have to remember it can involve lacrimal duct esophagus external auditory meters so this could be the um, uh, other sites where that can be involved in lichen planus so as it is an inflammatory it is again an, there, there is a immunological response and that is t cell activated in this um, lichen planus there are uh, circulating antibodies are there and circulating antibodies are uh, there for basement membrane zone this part you have to just uh, like uh, keep in your head only because what to explain so there will be basement membrane zone antibodies and usually these antibodies are present in 61% of cases for er er erosive lichen planus erosive lichen planus is the worst kind of lichen planus i'll be explaining that as well just remember uh, it is again autoimmune and it is uh, t cell activated uh, unidentified antigens are there uh, weak uh, antibodies will be there for uh, ba uh, basement membrane zone antibodies will be there just just keep this in your head if it comes some of sb in your stem now patient if the patient has come with a uh, lichen uh, planus so they, they, there will be itching there will be irritation soreness dyspareunia because of so much of involvement urinary symptom but apart from this you, now you can see here the, uh, in this type of patient because involvement of mucous membrane or vaginal membrane is there so they will usually uh, the vaginal discharge will be there so uh, in lichen planus in lichen sclerosis we, what we just read there is no involvement of any um, mucous membrane so there is no discharge vaginal vagina was not involved so this could this is a differentiating feature of the lichen uh, planus okay sometimes it can be asymptomatic this also you have to remember now you can see it uh, here so this is erosive kind of lichen sclerosis and uh, sorry lichen planus and only uh, and there is a in in this also there is loss of anatomy occur okay so there are two skin disorder of vulva you will find where there is loss of anatomy that is lichen sclerosis and lichen planus this is this is a very simple tip but that will help you in answering your sba sometime when difficulty occurs so you'll be uh, like just remember this if loss of anatomy is there so you will you have to remember you have to think of two thing answer will come from lichen sclerosis or lichen planus okay so in any other uh, uh, whatever the disorder we are going to read or what is there in the guideline or talk there is no loss of anatomy okay so now you can see lichen planus is usually three types it is classical type it is erosive type and it is hypertrophic type so this is classical type so you will find all these words in your sbs violaceous well demarcated polygonal pla plaques so this is the uh, polygonal plaques this is classical violaceous polygonal plaque okay uh, and um, and these are usually flat topped so now you can see these are flat topped lesions fine apart from this there is fine white lacy lines are there so these are fine white lacy lacy lines okay this this i got from internet so i i 
pick it, uh, put it here. So because in your uh, uh, questions, you will find this line, uh, exact all these words are there. So you will be able to identify what they are looking for. So this is classical violaceous polygonal plaque type of lesion. And this is Wickens trier that is fine white lacy lines. So these, uh, see, I have not seen this patient uh, uh, like lichen planus patient ever. So uh, uh, whatever I have like read or uh, I have got the pictures I have put, but clinically I have never seen this patient. This so uh, like um, that clinical experience is not there, but uh, if you do your exam, so you will find volacious, you will find polygonal, you will find flat topped, you will find uh, weakened stria. So these are the buzzwords that will you will find in your question that will help you answering your um, uh, helping you answering your SBS or EMQs. So these are the few words that are characteristic of lichen planus. So this is hypertrophic type. Uh, in hypertrophic time, there are thickened, so much of thickening and warty plaques are there. And because of this appearance, they mimic malignancy. Okay, so this part you have to remember because if it is hypertrophic, so uh, and, uh, and sometimes they become uh, like ulcerated, infected in that, if all those happens, so it can make like a uh, malignancy as well. So this knowledge is important because that will help in answering question. Apart from erosive lichen planus, this picture is from uh, TOG only. Now it, such erosions are there. So uh, this is the worst kind of lichen planus where the erosive, uh, where the erosions are there. So, uh, you, uh, so the, uh, there is a loss of anatomy may also be there. Now you can see here, th also there is loss of anatomy and erosions are also there. Okay, so uh, th this is a third kind of lichen planus. So uh, till now we have read three types. This is the classical type you will always find. But if you read it some uh, somehow, you know, some, you may if you see a patient in your clinic, you will be able to even diagnose also. This will be a hypertrophic type that mimics malignancy. And last is erosive type that has usually has a vaginal involvement. And there will there they, they may have a loss of anatomy. Okay, so this part is also important that will help in answering your question. Apart from this, uh, there is an involvement of vulva. We are reading that vagina mucus involvement is there. So uh, even the ginger, uh, gum involvement is there. So uh, if you find this term, uh, vulvo vaginal gingival syndrome, then uh, because ero if the erosive disease occurs, it can occur in all three sites uh, uh, like at the same time. So uh, if you find such kind of uh, word has been used in your question, you are definitely dealing with lichen planus. Okay. So with the pictures, they will be uh, like um, more better memory. Again, there, for this condition also, most common thing is the clinical thing that clinically we have to diagnose. If it is not clear, then biopsy will be required. Consider, investigation for, it is also an autoimmune disease. So investigation for autoimmune disease will be required. At least thyroid, rest history we take. If infection, then swabs. If allergy is suspected, then patch testing. Usually, both of the condition, they will have clinical diagnosis rather than all these investigations. Now, what will be the treatment? So, treatment first, uh, uh, first line will be a recommended treatment will be ultra potent topical steroid. Now, I just told and there are two conditions we are using ultra potent sclerosis and planus. So, here is the ultra potent steroid, clobitazol propionate that we know. But uh, a patient can use for uh, because it is an ultra potent patient will use it for some time. But if long maintenance therapy is required, then uh, like lower uh, potency uh, steroid can be used as the vagina. This part is different here as it has got a vaginal involvement. OK, so because of erosive vaginal lesions, sometimes a vaginal preparation that carries hydrocortisone that with an applicator can be inserted inside the vagina. 
this is uh, only uh, this treatment is only there in lichen planus why because of erosive vaginal lesions apart from this uh, consideration for prednisolone suppository may be done that is again um, like uh, vaginal prepare, uh, vaginal by vaginal route they can be put inside and these are the like uh, recommended treatment alternative treatment is same if uh, any associated antibacterial or antifungal infection is there so consideration for dermovet can be done okay apart from this if uh, systemic disease, uh, uh, disease is there like if it is a, a vulvo vaginal gingival syndrome in that situation uh, they, they will not respond to only oral treatment or local treatment uh, in that situation they would require systematic uh, treatment so what could be the choice so it could be oral cyclosporin it could be retinoid the retinoid usually we do in uh, skin condition so uh, in cases of hypertrophic lichen planus uh, retinoid can be given or oral steroid can be given so uh, they can start with prednisolone 40 milligram but it will be tapered later on apart from this consideration for oral biological agents can be done so uh, this you have to know that if this uh, vulvo vaginal gingival syndrome is there consideration for oral steroid immunosuppress immunosuppressant and even uh, biological agents can be done so again follow up so usually first time follow up will be after two to three months if this disease is stable it will be reviewed by gp but if uh, treatment is uh, um, if they are treatment resistant cases okay if they're not responding any complication is there then they will require referral to specialist vulval services and erosive um, lichen planus is di difficult it is the worst kind so it it will require referral to vulval services okay so because in, um, in part 2 also uh, a question come a question comes where answer will be just a referral so erosive lichen planus is a condition where uh, it is with, um, uh, difficult to treat it will require referral to vulval services okay now coming to summary of lichen planus so in your question if you find purple word purple pink volacious uh, polygonal polygonal plaques flat top lacy white vicum stria uh, vulval invo uh, vaginal involvement erosive lesions loss of anatomy if you are finding this these things in your question you are dealing with the lichen planus this number is important there is chance of squamous cell cancer and that is three per three percent because this number can be asked in exam treatment you already know okay treatment is not different so if all these uh, like things are there you, you will be sure in your question that answer you have to take is lichen planus so th that's all about lichen planus if any question you have to ask about lichen planus you can ask otherwise i'm just moving to another lesion any question any question about lichen planus No, no it is clear okay okay now vulval dermatitis or eczema usually uh, uh, dermatitis and eczema these are the words they they are used interchangeably so vulval eczema or vulval dermatitis usually it denotes the same thing so vulval dermatitis uh, or eczema so this you have to just remember vulval dermatitis or eczema these are same thing it is also called as spongiotic dermatitis why i have put this, um, this name here because uh, in one of question i found histology of uh, dermatitis and answer was spongiosis so then then i read and I, so uh, uh, and i found that the one name is spongiotic dermatitis also so just remember it that will help in answering your question so dermatitis is nothing it is just in skin inflammation so it could be kind of three types okay one is atopic atopic is allergic type usually it will you will it will be seen in the patients where they have got like any asthma any hay fever is there 
okay th this is a topic kind of dermatitis allergy contact like any substance that has come in the contact and because of uh, that irritation uh, because of uh, um, sensitivity of that substance some inflammation has come that is it can happen because of allergy contact or because of irritant like uh, if uh, there are certain chemicals certain powders or certain cleansing cleaning agent that the patient is using daily that is causing irritation so that because of that irritant contact there could be possibility of um, dermatitis or inflammation okay so usually uh, itching is there and there will be soreness uh, if you examine this patient redness will be there there will uh, there will there could be, uh, if it is prolonged then there will be because of itching excoriation like this excoriation can be there and if it is long standing then um, lichen lichenification can be there lichenification is a leather leather like skin and usually it is present if the dermatitis has been for very long period okay usually it is put under under the term lichen simplex also but it we may find this in dermatitis or eczema also okay so uh, what type of uh, because it do have an allergic uh, uh, it, it happens because of allergy so what will be the investigation it will be patch testing and second it could be biopsy uh, biopsy is only done if there is no uh, if the patient is fa um, not responding to treatment and if you think that there could be malignancy okay so if the diagnosis if some atypical features are there if you are thinking of malignancy if the patient is not responding to treatment then only biopsy is done usually in skin conditions it is clinical diagnosis rather than doing going for investigation so what will be the treatment it will be uh, there will be some precipitating factor you have to avoid that always uh, soap sub substitute has to be used and you patient has to use emollient and topical steroid can be applied here so now you can see here it is only a topical corticosteroid they are not saying ultra potent or supra potent here here we are using steroid that of uh, like uh, moderate potency or lower potency so it can be used a hydrocortisone or beta methazone but if severe lichenification or thickening of skin is there then for shorter time clobetazole propionate can be used so much no need to remember because in your answer there will be a stem emollient and topical steroid that will be your answer usually only skin inflama inflammation is there so uh, it is usually uh, taken uh, taken care at gp by the uh, gp surgery or even the dermatologist okay no gynae people or no vulval clinic is required for this type of patients now atopic dermatitis uh, why it is important because sometimes it uh, comes as a question in uh, atopic dermatitis usually uh, it will be in skin inflammation so there will be a, a, a erythematous feeling vp skin can be there like too much of discharge can be there apart from this there are some satellite lesions are there uh, sometime you will find in your exam uh, this uh, there like there, there will be so many condition and the clue will be only satellite lesion so this satellite lesions you have to remember this uh, happens in uh, atopic dermatitis apart from this there had been a one question where they asked commonest cause Candida. of uh, in yeah, candida also no ma'am satellite yeah, yeah yeah candida also there candida is just coming uh, it will come but if a, if you finding a question that is dealing with dermatitis and they have written satellite lesion so your answer will be uh, atopic dermatitis uh, apart uh, also um, there is one question i saw in a book what is the commonest cause of vulval itch in the children okay so answer is atopic dermatitis it is also written in talk so this part also you have to remember apart from this like um, answer what is the treatment topical steroid and emollient and uh, it is it does not require any special care so it can be taken care by a dermatologist and gp so what you have to remember in the atopic dermatitis is only 
two things you have to remember satellite lesion second line you have to remember it is the commonest cause of vulval itch in children only two from two uh, lines question comes or rest uh, the question is not coming uh, from a topic dermatitis it is not that important okay now shiboric eczema uh, usually uh, so much of uh, um, like uh, uh, secretions occur uh, so much of like um, in shiboric eczema and uh, it is given in the talk therefore i have put it here but actually i have never seen question from uh, from this uh, uh, shiboric eczema usually it occurs at intralabial sulcus so at the uh, sulcus it is there and uh, it can occur at other sites also scalp eyebrow nasolabial fold it can be there answer will be steroid and emollient care will be done by gp and dermatologist okay so if you find any such kind of word like um, glazed skin or shiboria or uh, uh, lesion at intralabial sulci so there could be answer shiboric uh, eczema but too much not to remember here because i have never seen a question because i wanted to put all things from talk therefore i have just put it here now uh, this this that was all about dermatitis it was not that important now coming to lichen plain simplex so uh, uh, if any itching in vulva it has to be there for very long interval of time whatever is the underlying condition so uh, then it is called as lichen simplex okay so uh, so whatever the conditions that were causing dermatitis we just read so if all of those condition is causing dermatitis and if the same condition is present for very long interval of time and patient is keeping on itching 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 so this condition is called as lichen simplex lichen simplex is also um, like, like uh, uh, is called as a itchy vulva okay so lichen simplex again what if you see as a definition so lichen simplex is the pruritic form of dermatitis so it is a dermatitis it is inflammation of uh, um, vulval skin but it is pruritic form okay so if excessive itching is there and inflammation of vulval skin is there so it will be lichen simplex or it will be itchy vulva okay so usually uh, erythematous hyperpigmented thickened plaques are there it can affect one side or both side so uh, of the vulva i will show picture also so what could be the reason behind lichen simplex so these are the few reasons so underlying dermatitis can be there for example if atopic dermatitis has been long time patient is itching if allergic contact has been long term patient is itching if fungal infections are there and long term patient is itching so then uh, it can be a lichen simplex because it is a long term vulval itch apart from this it is not uh, um, any other systemic disease can be there that is causing pruritus so for example uh, any renal failure is there uh, obstetric biliary disease is there primary biliary cirrhosis is there primary sclerizing cholangitis is there hyper or hypothyroidism or polycythemia so these are the systemic condition they usually cause itching so if itching is there because a prolonged itchy vulva it can be there from any systematic condition also it could be because of environmental condition or irritants it could be because of anxiety uh, sorry a psychiatric disorder like patient has got no problem but because of anxiety they are itching because of depression they are itching some some of them have a obsessive compulsive disorder and they are itching itching and itching so psychiatric uh, disorders can be associated so you like in simplex it, it is a prolonged itchy vulva and reason could be any reason so either it could be dermatitis dermatosis or dermatitis it could be systematic condition it could be environmental factor or it, it could be psychiatric factor so there could be prolonged itching from any condition and uh, the, uh, so it will be uh, lichen simplex it is important to understand why because you will get question from here because lichen simplex usually question comes
so they will have usually each and uh, soreness and because uh, because of prolonged itching okay there is a thickened scaly earthy colored skin with attenuated markings this is called as like lignification or leathery skin so if this is lignification or leathery skin this is not a very uncommon picture because because in our clinics also we see this kind of patient when they are itching 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 so sometimes you find this picture in the clinics also maybe not at, at the vulval region but any other reason you might have seen this picture this is very common okay so this is usually a lignification or or uh, this is a leathery skin so there will be erosion and fish, uh, fissuring there could could be excoriation because so much of scary, uh, scratching is there so surrounding area you will find the scratching mark of uh, also so these are excoriation so any prolonged leech, itching will lead to lignification and that will come under lichen simplex now what will be the each, uh, treatment so it is very important you will find this in your stem actually whenever there is a itching there is a release of histamine Histam histamine then call, call, calls for more itching temptation so it makes a cycle so this cycle is a each scratch cycle so what is the treatment for lichen simplex basically you have to uh, uh, break that cycle so it would require counseling to the patient that they have to break this cycle otherwise it it is keep on happening apart from this topical steroid okay apart from this uh, uh, like uh, oral tablets can be given hydroxyzine or doxepin okay that, that has been uh, useful and uh, apart uh, like uh, usually this uh, whenever you give uh, steroid in this pruritus it goes away but if the lignification is there that that is thickened skin is there in that situation it usually takes longer to resolve and sometimes it does not resolve also so in that situation they have patient has to apply topical steroid and that may be for longer interval of time maybe uh, with a reducing frequency they may have to use it for three to four months apart from this if any coexisting mental health issues are there like any depressions or any anxiety or any oc obs obsessive compulsive disorder is associated because of that this itching prolonged itching is there so cognitive behavior therapy is important in vulval lesion uh, uh, you will find that cognitive behavior therapy is uh, comes in the answer of like a uh, simplex why because mental uh, it could be because of uh, associated underlying mental illness as well okay so this is all about lichen simplex so uh, usually you will find this uh, each break cycle and also cognitive behavior therapy as a treatment if you see some of the stem of sba so this is all about lichen simplex okay so anyone uh, uh, till now I, I, you have got any question in vulval eczema or dermatitis or any question in lichen simplex you have to ask before i move ahead um hi dr priyata so in Hello. lichen simplex uh, uh, do we have to do this ferritin test uh, what is the, what is this ferritin test okay sometime you know uh, all this skin condition they are associated with anemia so to diagnose anemia they do ferritin test it was there in previous guideline but in new guideline uh, they have not so much emphasized that therefore i have not put in the slides uh, okay okay thank you dr priyata thank you and dr priyata can i ask a question yeah 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 Okay. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Pratha, I just wanted to like you know, understand about the vulval dermatitis. Now, when the question comes on that, I sometimes get confused, you know, with the scenario with lichen sclerosis because the, you know the clinical symptoms are overlapping in the. So how are we supposed to, you know, discriminate, especially when it's an early sclerosis picture? How how can we actually, you know, differentiate between these? okay see um, whatever in lichen sclerosis uh, there will be some buzzwords always be there 
in lichen sclerosis the patient will be post menopausal sometime with the absorption of vulva sometime some fusion some atrophy uh, perianal involvement so this type of words you will feel okay. in that person in in, in, okay. in vulva okay. 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 this Fine. type of word are there then you are dealing with lichen sclerosis but if these type of words are not there then it is just an uh, inflammation soreness itching then uh, you are uh, and they have given some irritant also then you are dealing with a dermatitis because in dermatitis there will be no loss of anatomy okay that will help okay, you in understood in, fine yeah that will help you in find uh, out your question very well and uh, i think uh, after this class you will not have any problem but still you find any question that is difficult you can send me i will answer that hello dr All right. Priyata. Thank you. Priyata. yeah my okay. question is on um, role of biopsy in lichen simplex can we make biopsy for patients with lichen simplex uh, like see uh, in usually skin conditions what we do we usually uh, it is clinical diagnosis but if a patient is not improving okay so, and you have got suspicion of any associated condition or if you have got any suspicion that there could be associated any malignancy then in that condition biopsy um, is done in skin disorder otherwise uh, like for just for diagnosis biopsy is not done okay thank you thank you so much okay welcome hello hello ma'am yes uh yes so, uh, in the lichen sclerosis if uh, it is not get relieved by the ultra potent steroids then which one to choose whether to biopsy or the this one tacrolimus which one to choose okay so i will tell you what really happens in uh um, yeah, usually when it is a clinic first thing when the patient comes uh, with the history and the, with the clinical uh, examination it will it will be a clinical diagnosis and usually the picture is clear you know so they will uh, give them ultra potent steroid one one uh, tube 30 milligram and they will explain them how to put that happens in uk okay they will explain so after three months this patient will come and if th after three months if uh, they will check for patient compliance if she has mm, applied that uh, ointment whatever way she was told and she is in compliant patient okay the, and uh, even after that if she is not improved then they will take this patient for biopsy and if that patient is improved then they will put that patient on follow-up yearly follow-up have i answered your question madhu it yeah, 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 ma'am. Yeah, then, uh, then tacrolimus, uh, tacrolimus cannot be chosen, ma'am. No, then on, uh, after the steroids, only the biopsy directly. Yes, we have to go back yes. For the biopsy. This, this top, yeah. uh, this uh, research mm -hmm. treatment or alternative treatment is for part two. Okay, clinically, yeah, yeah. for part three, yeah. when the patient is in front of you after three months of uh, treatment com with the compliant treatment patient is not getting treated or not getting better usually patient will be called for biopsy okay, okay. thank okay. you ma'am uh, one more thing you said we have to use ultra potent steroids only in case of lichen sclerosis and lichen planus so the yes. application method same for both that is uh, for one month daily and then alternate for the next month and then twice a week for the next month both same uh, pattern okay that will be yeah i was thinking someone will ask this question so uh, you know for lichen sclerosis th that is this is the regime for lichen sclerosis it is not for lichen planus mm -hmm. for lichen planus it will be patient to patient treatment they will individualize what the symptom patient has accordingly the treatment will change uh, will they will give but there is no fixed guideline or fixed format of treatment for lichen planus whatever we are reading it is for lichen sclerosis only okay ma'am yeah okay any question more any more question 
ओके सो अगेन दिस कॉज इज अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम वेन यू हैव टू डायग्नोज वलवल स्क्लोरोसिस बिकॉज वी हैव गॉट अ हैबिट वेन एवर वी सी क्वेश्चन वी थिंक ऑफ लाइक एन स्क्लोरोसिस एंड द आंसर कम्स एज वलवल स्क्लोरोसिस बट इफ यू नो द कंडीशन वेरी वेल यू आर नेवर गोइंग टू मेक मिस्टेक ओके सो इन वलवल सो दिस इज अ पिक्चर ऑफ सोरियासिस नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू कैन मेक आउट Uh, anatomy is not uh, affected here and uh, that means there had been no erosion there has been no atrophy and there had been uh, like uh, no clitoral hood the clitoris i can see in the picture but there, uh, you can make out that there is no loss of anatomy so um, that uh, this is one point that you have to remember usually in bulbal soreus in sorry in soreus is it is at in it can affect in any other part of the body as well but in psoriasis usually there are scales come scales are there okay but because this area is a moist uh, moistened area always it is wet so uh, in bulbal sclerosis usually the scales are not there if you can see this lesion you you are able to uh, find scales okay but if you see this area so you are not able to find any scale scale is not there because of wetness so this is a, a a bit different thing that you have to remember that will help in answering your question also so few um, important thing that you have to remember in vulval psoriasis and uh, it will be uh, uh, you will find some buzzword i am i'm go going to tell that buzzwords also uh, those buzzwords will be there usually it is symmetrical okay one buzzword there will be symmetrical involvement second buzzword it will be a, a salmon pink color erythematous lesion so you can see so much of redness is there you can see symmetrical involvement is there so these are buzzword you can see there there are no scales so just keep this picture in your head and your question will be clear now so in what happens in vulval sclero uh, in uh, psoriasis vulval psoriasis They, uh, there are well demarcated lesion it is uh, usually salmon pink in color usually in vulval uh, crease uh, vulval lesions there is no scale because of that moistening of that area no scarring and no loss of anatomy okay just remember this word there is no scarring and no loss of anatomy apart from this if you uh, that uh, uh, like flex um, some uh, hidden sites involvement can be there usually it involves flexural areas so uh, like in the knees in elbows uh, uh, umbilicus uh, scalp ears and lower back so these are the usually areas where um, this psoriatic lesion can be found okay usually it involved cleft postnatal cleft and treatment is um, uh, topical steroid if uh, or emollient is always there okay just uh, emollient and topical steroid will be the treatment uh, uh, if any associated bacterial and fungal uh, infection is there then apart from steroid you will give uh, like uh, some uh, anti fungal or anti bacterial treat, uh, tube also so this is from the talk they they wrote oxy tetracycline plus 3 per, um, and nystatin just keep it in your head because sometime in the answer stand you may find this apart from this according uh, in the guideline they said that weak coal tar preparation can be given uh, vitamin d analog such as um, uh, vitamin d analogs can be given so just remember these two things uh, if uh, it is in the answer stem so you will be able to identify but basic treatment for this is uh, use of emollients and topical steroid okay so there, there is not so much to read in uh, vulval psoriasis so if the vulval psoriasis um, uh, so this will be some some of the buzz words that will help in answering your question so these are well demarcated lesion these are symmetrical lesion these are salmon pink or reddish in color there, there is no loss of anatomy involvement of flexular uh, uh, flexular um, ural regions will be there and there will be no skill in vulval region so if you could remember only all these word your life will be easy and your answer will be oh, correct 
Okay, so anything you need to ask in vulval sclerosis? Steroid treatment for how long, madam? See, there is no uh, uh, no such uh, defined treatment uh, time scale can be there. It will be on the patient, uh, how the patient uh, getting response. Okay, it is upon the patient, this thing. Some patient will, they will be okay in few months. Some patient may take years also. Though, uh, according to my experience, this uh, psoriasis is prolonged skin condition. Usually, um, patient requires long-term treatment. Okay. okay, and there's no fixed follow-up also, right? No, no fixed follow-up. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, intertrigo, uh, what you have, you know, uh, everyone has seen these patients of intertrigo. Usually, uh, flexural rashes are there. It will be, uh, it may involve groin, natal cleft, uh, some memory area, uh, abdominal apron <laughs> fat. Those who are obese patient, below their, uh, below the, uh, that uh, uh, fat uh, uh, layer, so below that, you will find some kind of rash. So usually um, this is irritation plus infection with candida albicans. Together it becomes a itchy skin disorder that is intertrigo. Treatment will be uh, a topical uh, like oral antibiotics if inf skin infection is there. Apart from this antifungal uh, uh, local treatment we are giving, okay, Apart or emollients they are putting everywhere. So um, uh, why I have put it here because in some of the answer question stem intertrigo uh, is an answer. So this you have to know. You have seen like, everyone has seen this intertrigo. So it is uh, it is the itching at the flex uh, flexure fracture uh, plus it is infection with candida. Okay, it is nothing more important. You know this part. This is important. Vulvo vaginal candidiasis. Why it is important? Because new guideline has come in 2019 and a few things are important that will be helpful for, for, for your answer. Okay, so uh, vulvovaginal candidiasis, again, everyone has seen in, the, in their clinic. So usually patient comes with so much of itching and because of this itching, soreness, dyspareunia, all these symptoms can be there. Clinically, you will find redness, you will uh, find swelling, Sometimes discharge can be there, there and um, excoriation marks can be there. Curdy discharge, uh, like white curdy discharge, we all of has have seen this white curdy discharge. You know this. Apart from this, satellite lesions can be there. So someone was asked uh, saying satellite lesion. So yes, in vulvovaginal candidiasis, satellite lesions do occur. So you have to remember if the question belongs uh, is about dermatitis and they wrote the word satellite then you are dealing with atopic dermatitis. And if you are dealing with infection patient, vulvovaginal candidiasis or any infection, and if you find word satellite lesion, then you our answer is going towards vulvovaginal candidiasis. And this curdy discharge, everybody knows that we have seen, each of us have seen this curdy discharge. So what is important? It could be an acute or it can be a chronic. So acute, uh, like it will be single presentation or it is like first time it is happening. We are not too much of uh, important. This is not too much of important. All importance lies, lies here. This is an, uh, this you have to remember by heart because it is in question, uh, function of uh, definition of recurrent vulvovaginal candidiasis. So answer will be four episodes in 12 months with two episodes, either they have done confirmation by microscopy that means they have seen fungal hyphia under the microscope or, or culture has been done. But out of two times, one time culture is must. Okay, so this line, this all line you have to remember by heart because question is going to come from this line only. Uh, please don't get confused with talk because in talk, uh, definition of vulvovaginal candidiasis is not right. So this definition I have taken from vulvo vaginal bash guideline 2019. So uh, like uh, so please follow guide guideline rather than talk. 
so remember this definition okay so uh, uh, like uh, it is four episodes in one year with two episodes uh, clinical confirmation by microscopy and culture out of two uh, uh, confirmation one confirmation has to be with culture so remember this again it is uh, this slide is really important because you will get question from here even it is important for two and three both so if it is acute vulvovaginal candidiasis recommended treatment is fluconazole uh, 150 mg single dose this we are doing in our clinics also clotrimazole p3 is also 500 mg it is only a single dose so this part we uh, also we uh, we have to remember because sometime in our clinics we give it for more doses but if it is single, you know, if it is acute episode, only single dose. If you are giving oral fluconazole or if you are doing clotrimazole pessary, it has to be single dose. Okay, so this is a treatment. You have to remember it because as it is, it will come in your question. Apart from this, you have to like mug up this uh, a treatment for recurrent vulvovaginal candidiasis. Your answer, there will be induction treatment. There will be maintenance treatment. Induction treatment will involve fluconazole like orally every three days you have to give for three days uh, three doses okay so this is induction treatment so after every three days patient will take three doses three tablets of fluconazole so once induction treatment has been done then it will be in maintenance treatment maintenance treatment is 150 milligram orally once weekly for six months so this is once weekly for six months you will find many question with many of the stems um, but don't bother about that because if the question come in your exam it will be from new guideline so you will find this uh, treatment in your stem then if you take that this then only you are going to get marks so this this whole slide you have to remember with the doses uh, with the like whatever they have written as it is any question before we uh, i move ahead any question? Any question? Uh, no, madam. Can continue. Okay, good. Fine. So uh, now, after infections are there, now we move to VIN. So, VIN, uh, we already know there are two types of VIN. VIN is usual one. Usual is caused by SPV infection and uh, it also leads to CA and CA will be warty or bacilloid type. Okay, this, this you have to remember because I have seen question from here and VIN, uh, it could be, uh, it, uh, when the underlying cause is lichen sclerosis or lichen planus, this type of VIN is differentiated type and it it will lead to squamous cell carcinoma and it will be keratinizing type okay this this you have to remember only you know usual also has verrucous type no ma'am yeah the usual vin warty bacilloid and verrucous yeah it can be there okay so uh, usually uh, vin uh, there very varied uh, presentation can be there so there could be warts so these are lumps there could be erosion itching burning soreness irritation okay if you see them so there could be whitish raised whitish area there could be erythematous area there could be pigmented lesions okay so there could be warty type like this is warty type so usually this type of appearance is there okay and multifocal lesions are there why because we already know in uh, uh, the, it can involve cervix it can involve vagina and it can involve anus also okay so multifocal lesions are there in vin we are we are aware of this and it is underlying underlying causes hpv infection this number you have to remember by heart squamous cell cancer occurs in uh, 9 to 18.5 percent of the cases uh, if they have vin so till now we have uh, 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 about the squamous cell cancer we have uh, 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 like uh, read three numbers so in lichen sclerosis 
squamous cell carcinoma will occur in 5%. In lichen planus, it will occur in 3%. In VIN, it will occur in 9 to 18.5%. All these num numbers you have to remember, there is no shortcut. Now, diagnosis, how the diagnosis is done. So either it will be done clinically, and if clinically it is not done, then biopsy will be taken. And in biopsy, you will find atypical cells or cytological atypia. Sometimes uh, multiple biopsy may be required. Okay. And uh, when the, if any suspicion of cervical lesion or vaginal lesion, sometimes consideration for colposcopy can be done. Even if you see perianal lesion, like uh, anal warts are also very common, you know. So uh, then anoscopy can be done for diagnosis or to find out the extent this is also very important only you just remember this much so your life will be easy recommended treatment is local excision so what is the treatment of choice the answer will be local excision you will find many questions and, and there will be only one answer that is local excision second line treatment it could be uh, imiqui mode cream five percent this 5%, uh, usually they're not asking, but imiqui mod cream you will find in answer stem. Or if it is widespread lesion, sometimes vulvectomy can, uh, is also a treatment. Okay, so these are the recommended treatment. And uh, alternative treatment will be local destruction. So this, uh, apart from this, uh, uh, five um, flucouracil ointment is there. Apart from this, it is wait and watch. Because usually VIN present in younger group, so um, if it is in a younger you, uh, group and they don't want treatment you just keep on watch on them sometimes it can go by itself also so uh, this hierarchy of treatment i have uh, i have put it from um, bash guideline only because uh, answer uh, also you have to give from bash guideline okay now this is again a few things you can just uh, uh, you can remember so unusual type and usual type, VIN, because sometimes you may find question from here also. So in usual type, usually usual, uh, unusual type, it occurs uh, um, in uh, postmenopausal patients. Okay, it is not related to HPV infection. It is usually related to LS or LP. Here it will uh, link to keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma. We just read that. And it is usually a unifocal lesion okay because it is not related to hpv so it will be a unifocal lesion only one side you will find lesion okay. treatment will be local next season consideration and because it is associated with ls or lp so a topical steroid and emollient will be the uh, will be uh, supplemented by right? they will help in improving the symptoms of pruritus so this is the sum, sum up of unusual type that usually occurs in old age women and the underlying pathology is LS or LP. Okay, now another type is usual type. Mm, uh, usual type is usually uh, occurring um, in a, a younger woman and it is HPV and HPV is 16 type. Okay, 16, and, uh, we already know uh, that benign lesions are called by 16 and 18 and out of them uh, spv16 is important and it will lead into uh, carcinoma and it will be uh, it will be bacilloid warty or mixed kind usually multifocal lesion because it is virus related uh, uh, virus related so it will lead to uh, cervical involvement so cin could be there there could be associated vaginal involvement so a vein can be there there could be involvement of uh, um, anal lesion anal involvement so okay, anal intraepithelial neoplasia can be there immune uh, risk factor would be smoking usually if you find in your question either patient will have a immunosuppression or they will be smoking they have to have a sexual promiscuity or multiple sexual partner their treatment is uh, local excision or topical imiqui mod okay these are the treatment so now you can see the treatment is different in uh, in unusual type usually uh, treatment underlying pathology is L ls or lp so apart from local excision uh, added treatment was emollient and steroid 
and in this variety that is usual type called caused by hpv apart from local excision treatment is local uh, topical um, imiquimod cream okay so this is just in sum up because sometime in some uh, stem of the sb it can also be there so that's all about vin any one of you have got any question can ask me Mom, I had read uh, SBA somewhere like if VIN is seen in pregnancy, what is the treatment? So we'll go with Imoquimod, right, mom? 5%? In pregnancy, you know, in pre pregnancy, according to my understanding, Imoquimod we are not using. It will be X season. Okay. Yeah, thank you, mom. Please, I would like to clarify um uh as regards the progression rates of vin3 to carcinoma i've seen in different questions and the answers given are so confusing so i would like uh, your opinion on that uh please repeat your question my question is this progression of vin3 to carcinoma what is the rate what is the rate yes yes oh. ma'am Okay, you want to know duration, how long it yeah. takes? No, the percentage, the per in how many percent do you have progression of the IN3 to carcinoma? This is the number you have to remember. In VIN, in VIN and progression to cancer is 9 to 18.5. This is the only number you have to remember for uh, MRCOG part two and three. Don't get okay, confused. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I've seen it in a question, SBA, SBA books, where they put 40 to 60%. So I, I was a little bit confused. No, see, this is from the BASH guideline. And please follow this number only. Okay, okay. Please Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. See, I uh, I could have made this presentation. I have uh, I might have put from other sources also. But all inform when I take class or MRCOG, I try to always put all information from their sources. So information will be from guideline, from strategy, or from talk. Okay. So okay. The, this number, yeah, this number is from uh, uh, from Bash guideline. So you have to remember only this number. Don't get confused. This this will be my idea. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Welcome. Okay, in some uh, some uh, questions, I have seen uh, this Paget's disease. Also, few things you have to know. So much in, uh, information is not required. So usually, uh, Paget's disease uh, it is malignancy associated skin condition. So if Paget's disease, some patient is having Paget's disease, you have to just know that okay, malignancy will be there somewhere. Malignancy is there. It usually occurs in the area where a lot of apocrine glands are there okay because of this glands it occur, uh, apocrine gland uh, are there in vulva therefore it occurs uh, extra memory Paget's disease it occurs in vulva so it can occur at anal area rectal area even it can be associated with a rectal anal or bladder adenocarcinoma because they already said this Paget's disease is malignancy associated skin condition okay and usually it occurs in postmenopausal women. There will be vulval pruritus and soreness. And uh, you, uh, what is your, usually what the question comes? So uh, usually they will say there had been a, 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 a round cell, pleo, a large uh, pleomorphic cell in the lower part of um, uh, epidermis. So uh, usually this this you will find this uh, in your question stem. So then answer will come as a Paget's disease. If you can see this picture, so these are the round round cells you can see all over. These are the these are usually these are the Paget cells. Okay. So uh, in your question, I have seen two questions, and in both of the question they wanted uh, they they are describing this cell. So just if they say any round cell hello, uh, with the eccentric nucleus and um, uh, like um, uh, hello appearance some somewhere i read this so the, uh, when they are describing a special uh, is a cell okay usually they are dealing with a Paget's cell they are describing Paget's cell 
and the answer will go to the Peggett's disease, extra memory. Just, just, just keep this picture in the head. And then your life will be easy. You'll be able to answer. So just remember this. Apart from this, you have to remember that it is, it will be always associated with any kind of malignancy. Two things you have to remember. Then you will be able to answer because in part three it is not coming. Only you have to part three people has to know, and answer will be excision only. And surgical margins are difficult to achieve. Why? Because uh, in in this uh, type, so limited success will be for, uh, with the photodynamic therapy or topical imiqui mod. Okay. So uh, just remember three lines from here. So it occurs in postmenopausal women. Usually, they, in your question, they will describe a cell at the lower part of epidermis. They, usually, they are describing these uh, pegged cells or signet. Uh, the kind of cell so there uh, an answer uh, they are associated with malignancy and answer is surgical excision the treatment is surgical excision just remember three four things uh, about packets disease and you will be able to answer too much apart from these three four lines too much details of um, packets disease is not required okay sometime you will find bechet's disease so Bechet's disease, we already know it is an autoimmune disease and it, it is a chronic multi-systemic disorder. So there will be involvement of other area also. Usually it is uh, identified with a recurrent ulcers. So oral ulcers can be there and genital ulcers can be there. So whenever you are finding a, a question where systemic disorder is there or there is a, a recurrent oral and genital ulcer, your answer will go to Bechet's disease and in in, in Bechet's disease usually this ulcer will heal and there will be scarring just rem remember this word scarring just remember recurrent oral and vaginal ulcers okay and as it is an autoimmune disease your answer will be uh, immunosuppressants either they will give some steroid or they will give some immunosuppressants only three four lines you have to remember about uh, Bechet's disease the, then your question will come now, sometimes, you know, Crohn's disease can come. So it is again a, a Crohn's disease, a chronic inflammatory bowel disease. So there will be swelling, ulceration and sinus formation. It, it won't be hard in your from your uh, question stem to identify Crohn's disease. But what you have to remember that you have to choose an option where metronidazole and oral immunosuppressant they have given as an answer stem. So don't only go for uh, metronidazole and uh, not only go for oral immunosuppressants uh, both uh, will uh, if the answer stem carries both that will be answered okay that much is the knowledge required about crohn's disease apart from this i have seen many times question from uh, fempi, uh, uh, bulbous fempigoid and fempigus vulgaris okay so uh, uh, so much is not required only just remember these yellow things in in uh, 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 bullous uh, pemphigoid, so there will be sub epidermal blistering and antibody is present at dermo epidermal junction. So just remember that uh, it is a a bit superficial kind of situation. Okay, so there will be sub epidermal blistering and <laughs> this also and healing occur with scarring because it is on in the superficial part of skin. So scanning, uh, whenever they heal, there will be scanning. Apart from this, uh, there will be uh, antibody deposits will be there. That will be at dermoepidermal junction. Just remember one, two, and three words from uh, this bullous uh, pemphigoid. Uh, from uh, and in uh, pemphigus vulgaris, usually it is intraepidermal. Okay, it is subepidermal and it is intraepidermal. You, uh, there, because it is inside, so whenever they are healing, there will be no scarring, and anti uh, depo body deposits will be intracellular uh, spaces. Just remember these three lines. So any, uh, if your question comes, then only with these three things you'll be able to answer your SBA. Okay. Till now, the things are clear. Or any question? No, ma'am, clear. Thank you. So this again, nothing. Just in simple, uh, you have uh, read it from your talk. 
so what i wanted to say whenever a patient is coming with vulval itch you will do uh, you uh, you will find out if there is any suspicion of any like malignancies there you will refer for biopsy or for like uh, examination if any discharge is there you will take swab or you will treat and now apart from this if uh, now you will see for anatomy if anatomy uh, is uh, dis uh, distorted or normal architecture has been lost so you are dealing with two condition lichen sclerosis or lichen planus okay treat with supra potent or ultra potent steroid so just remember this this thing but if uh, architecture has not been deformed so anatomy is normal then you are dealing with other skin conditions so according other skin condition we are using moderate potent moderate potency topical steroid okay so if any time patient is not improving whether this patient or whether this patient so a, a patient is not improving to the treatment any suspicion of cancer you have to refer that patient to cancer pathway so whatever we have read it is just sum up of uh, everything clear so now if this will emphasize you that uh, loss of anatomy will be there in two lesions sclerosis and planus and supra potent or ultra potent steroid will be required for two lesions that is again like in planus and uh, uh, sclerosis apart from this if there had been no improvement or if any suspicion of cancer then you have to refer for like um, for biopsy or further investigation okay so this is just in sum up apart from this this you already know i will i just want to put it here because i want to complete it so uh, whenever a patient this is important for part 3 whenever a patient is coming with vulval disorder some general advice you will always give what is that she has to avoid soap bubble bath deodorant and feminine spray okay uh, they are usually advised to wash the area with water they should avoid scrubbing there should be no antiseptic used okay this is important advice no antiseptic there should be loose cotton undergarments uh, whenever they are washing with their garment it will be with water fabric conditioner should not be used because they could be potential irritant and this is important so they uh, usually we ask them to use tampons rather than pad because sometimes some of the women uh, with this pad material because it is in the contact with the skin so allergy can happen okay so it can irritate so they are asked to use tampons maybe you will find some of the stem that uh, they they are advised to use tampon so that will be yes okay so these are just general measures you everybody knows this so till here all vulva lesions okay lesions are um, complete so now because this is the last part that left so i put it here so till now any question you can ask no question okay so now after after the lesions this is the uh, vulvodynia also question comes therefore i put it here so in in vulvodynia usually patient will have pain 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 but clinically there will be no lesions there will be no visible finding okay so there will be burning uh, usually they have some neurological involvement though its etiology is not proven so they will have a, a burning type of pain but we, when you examine them there will be no finding okay so uh, usually this vulvodynia can be uh, either it can be localized like it will be look uh, at a particular region part of the vulva or it will be in whole vulva so it could be localized or generalized or it could be provoked or unprovoked provoked means on uh, like um, they will have pain on some activity like um, when they are putting uh, during intercourse they have pain or put, uh, during insertion of tampon they have pain okay so this will be provoked and unprovoked that means they are having pain without any reason and sometime it could be mixture of um, both of, of them okay so the take what you have to learn that clinical there will be no finding in vulvodynia now localized type it is also called as vestibulodynia maybe you can get in your question usually uh, clinically if uh, uh, etiology actually it is multifactorial 
there could be any previous history of vulval uh, vaginal candidiasis or there could be any history of herpetic lesion or there cannot be any history so it actually uh, etiology is not that much known and uh, clinical feature will be pain okay uh, and uh, if you find clinically normal uh, either there will be no uh, no no clinical finding or sometimes erythema or some redness can be there okay but uh, with the redness you are not able to diagnose it if if that if if um, this patient is touched with some swab or something maybe uh, she will have tenderness okay so tenderness can be there because they have only pain no lesion what could be the treatment so treatment uh, uh, usually uh, it could be topical local anesthetic either lignocaine ointment can be used or 2% lignocaine gel can be used some physical therapies are there these are tens vaginal trainers cbt cognitive behavior therapy or psychosexual counseling this you have to know for, uh, why because sometime you will get in um, some of the stem of sb can contain this apart from this oral treatments are also there you will find question from the, uh, this also so what is the oral treatment that is uh, tricyclic antidepressant so usually amitriptyline is given and doses is not important but it was there in the guideline it is from usually st started from the lower doses it can be increased up to 75 sometimes surgery is required that that part is used uh, uh, like excised so this is uh, what is the name of surgery that can be done if all other uh, she's not improving to any other symptom so that will be modified vestibular uh, vestibular uh, vestibulectomy okay so this could be the surgery so this much you have to uh, like know about uh, this uh, 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 localized or provoked type of vulvodynia or vestibulodynia so local provoked vulvodynia is called vestibulodynia therefore the surgery name of surgery what can be offered as a treatment is modified vestibulectomy okay so another will be unprovoked that is no reason and patient is having pain no reason patient is having pain clinically there will be no symptoms sometimes this patient uh, they have associated fibromyalgia or bladder pain syndrome can be there or irritable bowel syndrome can be there clinically examine there will be no problem totally normal so because of all this pain they usually have a psychological uh, uh, sexual dysfunction in part three the station will come and she is not able to have intercourse so you have to counsel this patient this uh, and psychologically these patients are very upset patient what is the recommended management so uh, again uh, pain modifiers can be oral treatment tca tricyclic antidepressant first line is imitriptyline uh, doses can be started from lower down from 10 mg to 100 apart, uh, apart from this consideration for gabapentin and pregabalin can be done okay and alternative uh, treatment or associated treatment can be local uh, lignocaine cognitive behavior therapy psychotherapy physiotherapy if there is a if uh, on clinical examination they find the pelvic floor is weak Okay, so this is the recommended uh, treatment for unprovoked vulvodynia. Too much details is not required. Only what is uh, what is the treatment plan that you have to know? Because in uh, in question usually they ask about treatment. As why? Because there is no clinical finding here. Okay, any question about vulvodynia? no question okay some important definition uh, that you should know maybe it can come in your exam as an sba so what is fissure fissure is thin hairline crack in the skin so if excessive dryness is there and if hairline crack comes so uh, that is fissure if any scratch mark of the patient you find that is excoriation uh, if uh, a shallow denuded area only superficial area of skin is lost that is erosion but if complete layer of skin is lo lost that is ulcer 
you may find question in between what is the uh, in your exam uh, as a definition of erosion or as a definition of ulcer okay so in erosion there will be superficial layer of skin will be lost in ulcer for whole thickness of the skin will be lost okay macule it will be the flat uh, area with a color change uh, 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 apart from this nodule and papule is important so these are elevated areas that you can think from the uh, no, their name uh, only difference is in their size so papule is a smaller nodule is uh, is larger so these are palpable lesions papule is less than 5 nodule is more than 5 this few definition you have to know because it can come also apart from this what is plaque we have seen so many plaques so it is a palpable flat lesion it is a flat lesion but we can palpate it and it is 0 0.5 centimeter uh, like in uh, when we were doing glycan planus so we have seen polygonal plaques so these were uh, palpable flat lesion and these are more than 0.5 centimeter Vesicle, you already know that is a fluid filled blister, and also you know the chronic leathery skin is lichenification. So important that uh, can come uh, here from here is erosion, where only a uh, superficial layer of skin is lost, or you can get ulcer where whole thickness of skin is lost, or uh, you can get it from nodule and papule. So papule will be less than 0.5 nodule will be more than 0.5 centimeter okay rest i don't think so from here any question can come so this is important for both part two and part three people so how the things work in uk so usually uh, patients are seen at four levels so they will be seen at gp they will be seen at general gynec clinic they will be seen at supra specialist care or vulval clinic okay or they can um, any malignancy they will be seen uh, at the level four care or gynec cancer or cancer team will be uh, this patient will be seen at the gynec cancer team so there will be four uh, levels the patient is seen so what the gp is doing it is important because sometime uh, part two also i have seen question part three it is very important so G, what gp can do so gp can take history do clinical examination send some swabs so uh, what condition can be treated at GP? So uh, uncomplicated infection can be treated or follow up of uncomplicated uh, skin conditions can be done. We have just read follow up of lichen uh, sclerosis and also follow up of lichen planus. So what we were reading, uh, if the disease is stable, annual follow up can be done at GP. So these were, uh, if they are uncomplicated, follow up can be done at the uh, GP surgery okay so this is a function of GP apart from this gynae clinic like we are gynecologists so general gynae clinics are there so what treatment can be done at general gynae so uh, um, we are doing uh, like a patient whole assessment can be done we can send swab even we can take biopsy also okay so uh, treatment for all common or uncommon condition can be done so what a GP cannot do uh, like we can do that. We can see a patient. We can diagnose lichen sclerosis. We can diagnose lichen planus, and we can diagnose uh, uh, um, psoriasis also. And accordingly, we can treat. Okay. So these are the skin condition that gynecologist can deal with. So uh, it it will be vulvodynia. It will be unifocal, a vulval neo, uh, uh, vulval lesion, or it could be some complicated infection. Um, can be uh, dealt with gynecologist okay so main important to learn what can be done at vulval clinic in vulval clinic there will be management of uncommon and rare condition uh, skin conditions like if erosive lichen planus is there so when we were reading lichen planus so we said like erosive lichen planus will be uh, referred to vulval clinic so this is the vulval clinic and uh, we are referring uh, erosive lichen planus there because we can't treat it. If multifocal uh, VIN is there, so if it is unifocal, it can be seen by your guy, uh, like uh, uh, V gynecologist. But if it is multifocal uh, VIN, it will be taken care in vulval clinic. Okay, or any patient uh, 
that is not uh, we as a gynecologist we were we were treating vulvodynia but if the patient is, is not getting relieved by our treatment so patient will be sent to supra specialist vulval clinic and if any rare condition is there that we think that we are not able to manage so that will be seen in supra specialist uh, vulval clinic so uh, therefore uh, it is whenever we are like uh, in in part two questions many times answer will be referral to vulval clinic and part three people when they do station they know when they, they have to send patient for vulval clinic referral to vulval clinic when the follow up can be where the follow up can be done so if the disease is stable they can be followed up at gp and if the uh, pa uh, disease is unstable uh, like uh, complicated or anything is there so patient will be referred to the supra specialist at vulval clinic if any cancer suspicion is there like malignant and pre malignant condition is there then usually like uh, they has to be seen by the cancer team now you can see uh, vulval cancer vin uh, uh, apart from including pegets disease so if extra memory pegets disease is there like any cancer association is there then they will be seen by the gynae cancer team okay so this is important to understand how uh, level of care are there uh, for vulval clinic um, services in uk because that will help in answering your questions okay now uh, my teaching part is done now you have I'll, there will be question session for you so if any one of you have got any question till now can ask me any question Any question? Okay. No question. Okay. So now uh, you can tell. Uh, there will be a question practice. So, uh, so now you read this question, then you have to answer me. Good. Now people have become smart. Okay. Yes, it is Pagets disease. Now you can see here. So histology so shows round atypical cell with oval nuclei and pale cytoplasm with the within the clusters um, among the basal cells of epidermis. So it have now we just read. Yeah, you all are right. It is Pagets disease of vulva. And this question is from strategy. Now you know reading few things about Pagets disease was important. So a correct answer, Pagets disease of vulva. Uh, can you show the answer once more, please? Um, can you go to the question slide? First question. So you see here, so this is postmenopausal patient, 70 years, vulval pruritus, fine. Now, if you find biopsy, then there will be a round atypical cell with oval nuclei, pale cytoplasm, and these are in the basal layer of epidermis. So from here, these are the keywords to answer, fine. So the, this is the answer. Clear? Should I move? Yes, ma'am. Move on. Yes. Now uh, it has to be plainness because purple is the word. Okay, purple nodule is the word. So answer is like in plainness. This, uh, like I, I have not explained this. This you have to remember only. So, 
so very good answer who has put d answer is right dr asif so pegets disease recurrence is 50% you have to learn only okay there is no other way yes very good so if spongiosis is there it has to be eczema okay spongiosis is intracellular edema that is characteristic of eczema fine oral symptoms yes very good it is oral symptom because mucous membrane involvement is there in lichen planus yes you are right symmetrical okay symmetrical symmetrical is a buzz word here valval psoriasis well demarcated erythematous or red colored plaque often symmetrical frequently affects uh, natal clefts or flex flexular areas usually lack scaling because of maceration or moist moisturing or usually fissuring is there so answer is valval psoriasis raised lesion yes very good raised lesion so uh, these are the options okay now it is sb uh, it is i think emq uh, can i ask a doubt like uh, you said uh, erosions are the most uh, difficult to treat and diagnose no? so i thought maybe it is uh, erosion what you are saying here you said uh, which of the following uh, will prompt you to take a biopsy it is raised yes. or ero no ero um, uh, i don't know who is speaking erosion what we read right now in a definition erosion is just a loss of superficial layer of skin and erosions are present in so many skin condition okay hmm. so erosion is erosion is not that uh, like with erosion you will not send any patient for biopsy you will send any patient for biopsy if you find any suspicion of uh, malignancy is there okay so if any elevated or raised area is there that is that means some overgrowth is uh, going there that is therefore it, it is raised area so raised area um, you are suspecting of malignancy therefore you are sending the patient for biopsy okay thank you so you read this and this is your options yes it is plain as yeah it is plain as because the buzz words are flat talk white streaks these two are the word buzzword and answer goes to like and friends read this question this is good question
Okay. Now I'm showing you options. This is question again. Is it candidiasis? Candidiasis, uh, significant vaginal discharge, not foul smelling. No, candidiasis is not, could not be there, you know. Okay. They, usually they will write cardi discharge. They will tell you some immunosuppression in candida. Okay. That is not there. So not foul smelling discharge. That means there is no infection. So this is the word that is point, pointing no infection. Like in sclerosis? Like there in is, planus? Uh, there is no, no buzzword for planus. There is no buzzword for sclerosis. Topic. A topic. Please show the options. Yes. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Is it, it is check? Yes, it is Bashir. Okay, so what is the clue here? It is non false smelling uh, discharge. That means uh, there is no infection. Okay. So if there is no infection, only ulcers are there. So there could, uh, uh, and there is no buzzword for uh, sclerosis, no for planus. So it is Bashits. So you read this question. Okay, so what is your diagnosis? Lichen sclerosis. Good. So it is lichen sclerosis and it is clobetasol. So one thing I want to tell you here, the patient, I think patient is diabetic or what? Yeah, patient is diabetic. So, you know, this diabetes they have given because everyone will think of candidiasis and they will do it wrong. But if you read it well, so additions of labial margins that will give you clue. Right, lichen sclerosis, clobetasol. Read question. It's the chance. Mm -hmm. Lichen planus. A planus, there is the uh, you're not oral and both and oral and genital ulcers. Yes, so it is bashets. Bashets. So be, yeah, so uh, choose treatment. Bashets, okay. Immunosuppressants. Yeah, L is the answer. It should be L only. Immunomodulators they have given. Basically, it is immunosuppressant and an immunomodulator both. Okay, so this is the question and this is, these are your options. Question, please. Human papilloma virus? 
Yes, uh, you have, that is uh, fine. So you, what will be your answer? Photodynamic mm. uh, No. Local excision. Yes, it has to be local excision. That's true. Who said photodynamic therapy? I just uh, told so much. First line is um, in BIN, first line of treatment is local excision. Okay, second is iniquimod. Third is valvectomy. If, if too much involvement is there. So please don't make mistakes. Answer will be treatment of choice is local excision for BIN. There is smoking and HPV risk. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Answer. Psoriasis treatment is topical steroid. So they have not given okay. any topical steroid. So whatever steroid they have given, you have to mark. Clobetasol? Yes, it has to be clobetasol. It is psoriasis. Um, just show that answer slide. Which one? This one? Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Carry on. Huh? Okay, so these are the options. Prawns disease. Prawns yeah. disease. Interferon? Prawns disease, it has to be immunomodulator suppressant or metronidazole. Immunomodulators. Yes, immunomodulators. Okay. Valvodynia? Yes. Valvodynia? Yes. So complaints of burning and, and no identity visible finding. It has to be pain. It has to be vulvodynia. Very good. TCA. TCA. Yes, it has to be TCA. Yes. Dermatitis. Change in texture also. Candidiasis. Candidiasis. Okay. I don't think so. Okay, because change in texture. Lichen texture. simplex. Lichen simplex. Uh, lichen simplex. I know. It is it's lichen sclerosis. Because uh, oh. texture, texture, that means anatomy is disturbed. Uh, Ma'am, can you please uh, show the previous question, please, once again? This, this question. Uh, yes, yes. This patient has vulvodynia. She has used uh, topical treatment and uh, she has used uh, gabapentin. She is not improved. What will be the next line? So, answer will be TCA. Okay, pain modifier. What we read is pain modifier, amitriptyline. Okay, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. The last Ma one is like. Yes, 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 yes. Is the lichen sclerosis is the most common one? 
uh, whatever the question says you can just see that because i never okay, found uh, i never found you know this in the any anywhere so this question like i won't be able to give you uh, okay, they said one have significant no, no. vulval symptoms. Uh, Dr. Priyata, I want to know whether this is the most common vulval disorder seen in UK in the hospital setting, like in sclerosis. This will be difficult for me to answer. <laughs> I will search for it. This I cannot okay. answer. Okay, thank you. Because I read uh, the clinical part of it. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Peter, what will be the color change in lichen sclerosis? Like, uh, lichen sclerosis, all this a... pale color, white pale color. Okay, okay. But I think uh, in uh, texture, they should, uh, like in question, uh, uh, they are saying texture. They should write something that will uh, give clue for loss of anatomy. Then answer. Then the answer is very clear. But only with the texture, answering is difficult. But you should know. Yeah, and there is no age. There is no but, age given. Yeah. And yeah. You, actually, no clue is given in this question. Uh, no like clue. so, that is yes, why. Right. Right. No, no clue. But you know, you just know this. You should know this. No, if but these are not like, in like, black lines, looking and, like uh, D option. And uh, the most common disorders in UK. This could be very tricky. Yeah, this is this could be very tricky um so for this question i will search for evidence if i find anything i will put in the group okay, okay. thank you thank you okay thank you thank you doctor the survey thing i really myself have got endless idea Is it yeah. Thinning and effacement. It's E. Yeah. Thinning and effacement of a stomach epithelium with chronic of a dermal inflammation. Uh, it could be yeah. hyalinization of upper dermal. Yeah, it is hyalinization. Keyword is hyalinization. Okay, we read the keyword hyalinization. Okay, yeah. so answer will be Hellenization. We just read Hellenization. You, you did tell two things are very important. One is epidermal atrophy and second is Hellenization. Yes. Okay, I have just searched net and what they are saying, lichen sclerosis is the most common chronic basic lesion in the vulva okay okay thank you yeah so hopefully that question this type of question that the survey question will not come but yeah you should know so fragile skin 60 years old fragile skin no involvement of vagina in oral mucosa. Very clear. Why you are writing E? Okay, well demarcated lesion. But uh, in psoriasis, it will be red plaque. Be red color. Yeah, red color. Is lichen so, sclerosis? It has to be lichen sclerosis. So, use all buzzwords. Okay. So it is 60 years uh, fragile and white. So it has but to be no relief, no relief with the scratching. Naman. Itching, no relief with scratching. We told that that is the simplex when the itching is no relief. No, no, that is just an, you know, uh, what should I say? That is deviating you from the task. But you see 60 years, you see fragile. Fragile skin means thin skin. You see well demarcated is fine. But you see white plaques, you see oral and no oral or vaginal involvement. So it is very clear of sclerosis. Okay. In psoriasis, now how will we do? In, in lichen planus, there will be uh, mucosa involvement. 
so a is not the answer in lichen planus uh, simplex there is no loss of anatomy so hair skin is fragile so lichen simplex cannot be there in vulval dermatitis also there will be no loss of anatomy but hair uh, it is fragile skin so it cannot be there in vulval psoriasis there will be red lesion so this cannot be there so answer should be lichen sclerosis okay so please uh, read or question very well find out all clues then you put answer it is like in sclerosis fine so here they ask second line treatment okay acrolimus yeah, acrolimus yeah. it is it is very clear so, acrolimus show the answer once more what do you see oh that answer once more i don't know what you are saying can you show that answer once more there is asking thank you Figure of eight is there. Is lichen sclerosis? Lichen sclerosis. E? Yes, it it has to be E because uh, any uh, like a uh, vasculo bulbulous thing is not there. So it is E. Again, E, ma'am. Local surgical excision. Yeah. Now you should remember this by heart. Yes, it has to be E. Again, E, ma'am. Extra mammary paget disease. Yeah, signet cells. Okay. So this is the mm. clue of signet cell is the clue. It has to be this. Yeah. Very good. ls uh okay uh, ls so, so any loss any loss of anatomy is there scaling fissuring scaling fissuring so sorry only uh, vulval involvement is it, is it, no vaginal involvement uh, Kindly show the options. Is it candidiasis? Yes, it has to be candidiasis. First, she is uh, taking maybe she is on steroids or something for the SLE. She is okay, I will read the question again. I have not read. So these are your options. Is uh, I, ma'am, lichen sclerosis? So Vulval involvement, no vaginal involvement. Inflamed labia, like edema, candidia. scaling. No, it has to be. It is vulvo vaginal candidiasis. So why it is there? Now see, there is uh, a clue: is immunosuppression and no loss of anatomy. No uh, vaginal symptoms, no ma'am. How we tell? Well, low vaginitis. There is no so vaginal discharge. Okay. Then uh, there is inflammation and fissuring. Fissuring is just skin crack, uh, and uh, there is scaling. But loss of anatomy. Uh, uh, can you find out any loss of anatomy? No. No, no. So loss, 
no loss of anatomy in the, you read this question very well but there is no loss of and no nothing is giving you any idea of loss of anatomy and even edema in ls edema will not be there no there will be no edema and suppose Jesus. this history of flare up of uh, uh, with sle which is uh, telling about steroid uh, can we think about um, uh, this thing uh, psoriasis psoriasis no no see psoriasis has got a uh, red color typical lesions red color typical lesions of red color yeah the okay, distraction is scaling as a redness and itching of the vulva he said no? see redness is anything can be red but red well demarcated lesions are there in psoriasis okay these are red well demarcated lesions redness means whole vulva can be red hmm. okay scaling uh, scaling scaling but no uh, vaginal symptoms no how we tell uh, vulva vaginitis ma'am there is no yes. discharge no discharge yeah only redness and itching inflamed vulva so in inflamed labia can be in anyone a, a, a bit it is only candidiasis we can do we can take it take that one ma'am but the option given is vulvo vaginitis <laughs> okay in uh, that's exam, why I, yeah, I, yeah you are <laughs> that's why I go for right. uh, hi so, there, so actually there will be two things either there will be two confusion either it is ls or either it is candidiasis okay so if you think of ls you will find you have to find something that give you clue that there is a loss of anatomy so we are not finding any loss of anatomy here this is one thing second thing um, uh, like she has got flare of uh, sle that means uh, she has got uh, immunosuppression okay she somehow she is in immunosuppressed state she so, must be using steroids that's the reason why she had candidiasis yes so some immunosuppression is going on therefore the answer is candidiasis okay okay ma'am thank you clue is immunosuppression flare of sle and no loss of anatomy no loss of anatomy now you can find out the buzzword here labial fusion atrophic vulva atrophic vulva and lichenification perineal involvement okay so what would it could be sclerosis yes yes so whenever the answer is sclerosis they will give you clear idea of loss of anatomy okay and this lichen lichenification word here is a like uh, to deviate you from the task but lichenification can happen in any prolonged uh, um, uh, itching condition okay so it can be there it can be there in any other situation also but main clue here is atrophic vulva labial fusion and perineal involvement fine they wanted to distract you therefore they have added the word lichenification and insulin so these are to deviate you from the task but if you follow your structure of finding buzzword and according to buzzword you will do you will never do a mistake otherwise many people will put candidiasis in this answer so clue here is dermoepidermal i don't know where okay i have not put the pembicoid ma'am j yes yeah, so it, yeah, it has to be that only it is pembicoid so just remember one buzz word then you will be able to answer otherwise whole table it is difficult to remember it is old question uh, it is not from the new guideline so nearest to new guideline answer you have to put 
Please, Dr. Brietta, can we see the, the last question, the last answer? Can we go ahead? Yes, you want to yes. say? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Answer. Okay, yeah. B, you already know it is B. But according to our new guideline, we have induction treatment where we give fluconazole 150 milligram every third day for three doses. We have got maintenance. Uh, um, should, uh, regime in maintenance regime fluconazole 150 milligram given weekly for six months okay this you have to remember So, yeah, it is very like clear. Like a plainness. Yes, white lacy pattern. Like and plainness. Yeah, it is like and plainness. It is very clear. Okay, this is the buzzword here. Read this question. Please show the previous answer. Okay, thank you. This will be is, is sclerosis. Yes. Yeah. It is sclerosis. Therefore, it is important to remember that pre adolescent yes. girl can have lichen sclerosis. Okay. So it is well demarcated whitish area and skin appears thin. So there is a skin atrophy. Okay. So this is clue mm -hmm. and five year old girl. So these are uh, clue. So it is lichen sclerosis. Then he says perianal is not involved. Yeah, yes, we are writing this; it is not involved. But you know, in all patients, uh, it is not uh, that every patient have an anal involvement. It is not there. Maybe in this girl, she has come early. Anus is not involved. Fine. Okay. 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 What is there? Sclerosis. Yes. Sclerosis. Yes. 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 Salmon pink, beefy red, well demarcated. And symmetrical lesion. Yes, it has to be. Yes. Okay. 